Good morning to the students of class 12B, both online and offline. And we're starting off with our discussion of the chapter Indigo. Now, before I proceed further here, let us just revise what we had read yesterday. Okay. So, can you just tell me who is the peasant we are talking about in this chapter? Who is the peasant? Who was brave enough to come to Gandhi seeking his help? Raj Kumar Shukla. Where did he meet Gandhi? Where did he come to meet Gandhi? Which place? There was a convention, Congress convention going on and he came to? Is it Lucknow or Kolkata? Lucknow. Isn't it? Yes. Then he was there. He saw so many important people are coming and uh, he thought that, uh, yes, I can go over there and ask for my help. And he had been working prior to that also for the sharecropping arrangement, right? So when he went to that delegation, he said, I have this problem to discuss. And somebody said that you talk to Gandhi. And that is why he came to meet him. But what did Gandhi say? He said that right now he had to go to certain places. And he said, I can come in, right? Uh, I'll be coming to Kolkata. Then you come there and you take me to your village, right? And yes, so to Gandhi's surprise, when he did go there, you know, he reached Kolkata. So Rajkumar Shukla was already waiting there. And in fact, before that, he accompanied him to all the places that he went to. He went to, you know, like what, Kanpur and Ahmedabad and followed him, all the places there, so making him promise, okay? Right? Now, what was the problem with the peasants of Champaran? What was the problem? Was indigo the problem? Or was sharecropping the problem? Yes, so the system was sharecropping. And what did the peasants have to do? They had to grow a commercial crop and in 15% of their land holdings, and they had to give it as rent, right, to the landlords. In this instant and during this time, what was the commercial crop grown? It was indigo. Now, what, are, what was the problem now? Yes. So what had happened to this uh, system here? Yes. Why is Indigo posing a great problem? Why is Indigo posing a great problem now? Anybody tell me now? Indigo is now? What has Germany done? Yes, very good. So Germany had developed a synthetic Indigo, right? And now as a result of it, what is going to happen? Yes. So the prices of indigo will decrease. You people are there, business studies and whatnot you do. So you should know better. And of course, this happened so many years ago. And naturally, the farmers are worried that uh, who will buy this indigo. But they did not know this. But what did the landlords tell them? That we will have this arrangement. We'll be having this agreement where they had to give indigo as rent. But now what will be the procedure? that if they want to be released from the system of not growing indigo, they will have to pay the landlord's compensation, right? And yes, so here, of course, many of the farmers agreed to do that, the tenants, right, they agreed to do that, and many of them resisted. So those who did not, you know, do that, what happened? The landlords, they forced them, they got their thugs to force them to do that. So imagine helpless, illiterate peasants, they are caught in a very difficult situation, right? So we have Mankira joining us today, Varun also joining us today, right? After many, many days. And Linda, you have also come after many days. Are you okay? All well, Shivam? Yes. So good. And uh, I, I like to say full class, you know, the more the merrier, isn't it? Right? Yes. And uh, it's nice that even if you are uh, what here in the class, listen to something what the teacher has to say. So this is the problem. Now, Gandhi has gone to which place? Has he reached Champaran? First of all, where did he go to? Where did Rajkumar Shukla take him to? Kolkata, he met him, no? Then from Kolkata, they started moving towards Patna. They stayed uh, at the house of, or Rajendra Prasad was not there. Then there was a professor, Kriplani, he stayed at his house, right? 
and yes so all the peasants over there all the workers over there they thought gandhi is also another peasant because of his simple style of dressing now after that yes he started moving towards muzaffarpur right he went to muzaffarpur he wanted information he said like what is it that the peasant is trying to tell me so he wanted information was he given that information no how did the officials behave they were very non cooperative okay right so then but uh, even though he was asked to go back did gandhi go back no right so he is there and he is collecting information all the peasants have come to know about it and yes so he is proceeded towards which place now which place come on look at your books if you can't find the answer should i share the screen champaran he's gone to champaran what about motihari where does motihari come come on look at all this now these are very very important things here so we should be very clear about it look at the screen please yes here so gandhi went to muzaffarpur right and then yes the share croppers they started coming and uh, right here then after that what happened yes so here he is talking about the arrangement the share cropping arrangement and now what is the system here there is a deadlock between the lawyers and the farmers the lawyers are not ready to reduce their fee they want to charge you know like the fee there if they want them to represent or if they want that their money should be returned okay right then uh, what is happening the peasants many of them have given money they have asked for compensation now they have come to know that synthetic indigo is in the market this is why this is happening they want the money is back so lawyers or peasants me kya ho raha hai ek deadlock ho gaya hai ek aisi bahut difficult situation ho gayi hai okay we have discussed about the share cropping system what is the share cropping system can anybody tell me yes what is it yes the peasants they worked on the land and for working they had to like of course to the commercial crop which was indigo at the time they would give it to the landlords clear now here throughout you know like then gandhi came to know that uh, some incident has uh, happened right there to at motihari what was there that a peasant had been maltreated so he is proceeding towards motihari now yes okay but when he is on the way he gets a message he gets a summon from the british officials telling him that he has to go back and uh, right so gandhi refuses but and then of course after that he says that because you refuse a court order you have to appear in court abhi tak ye samajh mein aa gaya scenario gandhi has reached champaran he is helping the peasants champaran se kahan jana tha motihari what was the news ki wahan pe ek peasant ko ya yeah, like badly treat kiya hai so gandhi wanted to go there but the officials did not want him to reach there they worried ki dekho see one thing abhi tak jo peasants kya the helpless they didn't have anybody to support them all of a sudden they feel that there is someone at least one person who is there listening to them gandhi was angry with the lawyers why was he angry with the lawyers because they created fear in the minds of the people and he said where people have fear in the minds right they are afraid of going to the courts for justice will justice happen so he is angry at them and also for charging so much fees right so now let's see what's happened now in consequence gandhi received a summons to appear in court the next day summon a legal order why because he refused to obey the court order which was leave the place go back right so wherever he is going everybody is saying go back and what is gandhi saying no i will not go back all night gandhi remained awake he telegraphed rajendra prasad to come from bihar with influential friends he sent instructions to the ashram he wired a full report to the viceroy so we all know that ashram at uh, sabarmati right so he was running there and he was taking care of that so he sent a telegram there he called rajendra prasad the prominent lawyer right and to come with influential friends that is to come with more lawyers and influential people there 
right? And so he has informed everybody about the situation because he has to appear in court the next day. He cannot go against the court order. Morning found the town of Motihari black with peasants. Black with peasants. So many peasants there, crowded, full towers like the town. They did not know Gandhi's record in South Africa. They had mainly heard that a Mahatma who wanted to help them was in trouble with the authorities. Their spontaneous demonstration in thousands around the courthouse was the beginning of their liberation from fear of the British. Peasants did not know about Gandhi what he has done before even when uh, you know like uh, rajkumar shukla also went so someone said you meet gandhi so he went to meet him and now gandhi is there yes listening to him working for them and he's very you know like uh, yes surprised also that this is a situation why it has not been sorted out earlier and the, what is the most important thing the peasants have got courage they're all coming out. They're not afraid of the landlords. They're not afraid of the authorities because they have a leader. They have their champion. The officials felt powerless without Gandhi's cooperation. He helped them regulate the crowd. He was polite and friendly. He was giving them concrete proof that they might, hitherto dreaded and unquestioned, could be challenged by Indians. So Gandhi is there sending a message that, see, I have not done anything as yet. And the farmers have the peasants who are illiterate, the weakest of the uh, society at that time. They have come out to support me. And what can happen if everybody else comes, right? So if the authority is being questioned, and this is 1917 we're talking about. The government was baffled. The prosecutor requested the judge to postpone the trial. Apparently, the authorities wished to consult their superiors. Kitne sare farmers aage, itne sare log aage ki kuch violence na ho jai. So they're very worried about it. Gandhi protested against the delay. Gandhi knew that everybody is here favoring me, they're supporting me. They cannot take any action. He read a statement pleading guilty. He said, yes, I was asked to leave. I did not leave, so I am guilty. He was involved, he told the court, in a conflict of duties. Why did he disobey the court order? Very important, please note down. On the one hand, not to set a bad example as a lawbreaker. He did not break the law. He's a law-abiding citizen. On the other hand, to render the humanitarian and national service for which he had come. He said, I have to choose between the two. Should I break the law, right? Or should I not serve my countrymen? So, do not miss a key part. Was it? Yeah, my lord, a break you follow karu, yeah, my countrymen ko help karu. What is it that he wanted to do? He wanted to help his countrymen, isn't it? Right? That is why he's there. He disregarded the order to leave, not for want of respect for lawful authority but in obedience to the higher law of our being, the voice of conscience. He asked the penalty due. He said, I listened to my conscience and my conscience told me you have to help the peasants, right? And if I have to help the peasants, I will have to break the law. He's broken the law. That is why he went against the court. And he is now there. And now the lawyers are going to decide what action to take against him. The magistrate announced that he would pronounce sentence after a two hour recess and asked Gandhi to furnish bail for those 120 minutes. Gandhi refused, the judge released him without bail. Right? So, Gandhi, like uh, the judges had said, we need time, and they gave a break, and they said, you have to give bail. Right? We know what bail is, yes, for that. But then Gandhi refused to pay any money, and so he was released. When the court reconvened, the judge said, he would not deliver the judgment for several days. Meanwhile, he allowed Gandhi to remain at liberty. So they, this was an order which the court passed because they were afraid that what is it that Gandhi might do about his influence, right? 
and now they did not give him punishment because they were afraid that there might be violence there might be you know like uh, the protests of the farmers so they did not not want any kind of an unpleasant situation and only gandhi could control them so that is why they let him go free rajendra prasad bridge kishor babu molana mazrul haq and several other prominent lawyers had arrived from bihar they conferred with gandhi what would they do if he was sentenced to prison gandhi asked why the senior lawyer replied they had come to advise and help him if he went to jail there would be nobody to advise and they would go home look at the attitude of the lawyers lawyers mein abhi ek realization nahi hua ki unhone kya karna hai right aur unko kya laga ki humko yahan pe bulaya gaya gandhi ki help karne ke liye and gandhi said what will you do if i go to jail so he said if you what will we do we'll also go back right but this was not the answer that gandhi wanted ki peasants ko pata chal gaya ki ek dusre ko support karna hai but these lawyers have not realized whom to support okay and what to do what about the injustice to the share croppers gandhi demanded the lawyers withdrew to consult rajendra prasad has recorded the upshot of their consultations they thought among themselves that gandhi was totally a stranger and yet he was prepared to go to prison for the sake of the peasants if they on the other hand being not only residents of the adjoining districts but also those who have claim to serve these peasants should go home it would be shameful desertion isko zara dobara se samjho dhyan se what did the peasants pehle to peasants ko baat samajh nahi aayi then after some time they all came together and they had a discussion gandhi is a stranger gandhi is an outsider he's come here to help the peasants hum local hai hum yahan ke rehne wale hai hum tab bhi kuch nahi kar rahe isn't it this is when they realize that gandhi is ready to go to prison for us right and we are not doing anything and if the peasants don't you know like fight for their cause or they give up their cause then we are in a way responsible they accordingly went back to gandhi and told him they were ready to follow him into jail the battle of champaran is won he exclaimed then he took a piece of paper and divided the group into pairs and put down the order in which each pair was to court arrest so the lawyers they had this discussion then they went and told gandhi that see if you are arrested we'll also come and uh, if uh, the need arises we might also go to jail and then gandhi realized when people become aware of their rights when people have courage then we win battles isn't it right so yes yeah, so it has to be even simple people here not powerful but courageous they can start a revolution they can start a movement and we have been witness to one in this past one year or not yes or no yes so we've seen it and uh, right that this is how much courage is required you want to fight for a cause you need to have the courage isn't it so gandhi said the battle of champaran is won ye bahut important line hai ye bahut important context hai many many times this question has been asked right so how did the lawyers change their minds how did gandhi influence the lawyers why did gandhi say the battle of champaran is won all these things you would have to remember clear till here what has happened gandhi started to go to motihari from champaran why did he want to go to motihari why was he going there because the farmer had been badly treated but as he started out on his elephant what happened was that he a messenger came and told him that he has to go back and gandhi refused and as a result of that he had to appear in court what happened in court yes so the when he had to come there in the court 
the whole town it seemed all the peasants had come out to support gandhi right and then the you know even the judge was really worried and scared that what is this happening because they had never seen so many peasants coming out to show their support so did he pass any sentence did he give any punishment he said we'll just take a two hour break and then after that we'll give the judgment they asked gandhi to pay bail gandhi refused and then later on he was just uh, allowed to be free without passing any kind of order or any sentence then comes to the question of the lawyers because gandhi had called rajendra prasad and told him to bring influential people with him so he brought these lawyers with him now the lawyers when they saw gandhi ready to go to jail he does not even know this area he does not even belong to this place is the first time that he has come here and heard about the share cropping system right so he is ready to go to jail then the lawyers feel that we should be what ashamed of ourselves that belonging to this place we are not ready to do anything for our countrymen so they also decided that if gandhi goes to jail we will also take the cause forward hum bhi aage is cause ko continue karenge and gandhi said the battle of champaran is won okay right so very important several days later gandhi received a written communication from the magistrate informing him that the lieutenant governor of the prince had ordered the case to be dropped civil disobedience had triumphed the first time in modern india so the case against him was dropped so very nice what is civil disobedience what is civil disobedience not to be the order isn't it all right although yes we can't break law we can't go against the law but when there is injustice sometimes people they do stand up against it and for the first time this incident so why is this battle of champaran important what is it important for yes can you tell me quickly what is it important for it is about one the share cropping yes then it taught courage to the peasants it highlighted the condition of the lawyers and most importantly yes it is civil disobedience or kaise hua ye civil disobedience peacefully without any violence now look at these textual questions please look at them the events in this part of the text illustrate gandhi's method of working can you identify some instance of this and link them to his ideas of satyagraha and non violence what is satyagraha you've done in your social sciences what is satyagraha satya is truth so fighting for the truth yes and civil disobedience what are the instances here so all these instances here it is they are example so the how gandhi went to jail how the peasants came to support him how finally the judge had to decide that fine we are dropping the case these are all examples of satyagraha and civil disobedience and of course was there any violence involved was there any killing involved was there any attack on the police or the protesters all this happened very peacefully without any incident of violence is it clear till here yes so we can read one more paragraph and then we'll stop for the day gandhi and the lawyers now proceeded to conduct a far flung inquiry into the grievances of the farmers depositions by about 10000 peasants were written down and notes made on other evidence documents were collected the whole area throbbed with the activity of the investigators and the vehement protests of the landlords so gandhi with his lawyers they making all this uh, collecting all the information collecting all the evidences that they have peasants are given you know deposition a legal writing 
against uh, this here or this uh, sharecropping system. And so Gandhi had a lot of evidence. Who was protesting because all this activity is going on? Who is protesting? Who is upset? Who is upset because of this activity? The landlords, aren't they? So the landlords are not happy because they feel that, uh, yes, uh, their authority will be taken away. And who are the landlords here in this case? Who are the landlords? The Britishers? Yes, so the Britishers also. And uh, yeah, so they were also Indian landlords who were, uh, you know, like, yes, uh, supporting uh, this or they were giving out their land for the tenancy, okay? So yes, so the landlords were greatly protesting it. And uh, this uh, is here step by step how this problem was solved, which had been going on for generations. The poor peasant having no identity, having no courage, but all of a sudden one incident can change, you know, like uh, their whole lives. And uh, yes, yeah, so we'll continue reading with the remaining chapter tomorrow, okay? Yes, yeah, so lots of facts and lots of information which you need to register.